thank you very much. Today we are with Professor Richard Whittington. He is an iconic figure in the strategy practice community, and that's one of the reasons why we are uh, interviewing him today, but also because he has had the honor of organizing as a program chair, as a co-program chair, the Strategic Management Society conference for the first time face to face. And as we all move away from lockdown situations into a more normal life, or what this is becoming a new normal, I think it's fabulous to understand how Richard has taken his uh, lots of knowledge on how strategies practice into practicing it a little himself and putting together this conference, which is so important to all of us who uh, share the strategic management interest. Uh, so, well, hello, Richard. Thank you so much for being in this interview today. Thank you, Nasir. I'm looking forward to it. Well, let's start by discussing first, how did you come about uh, to organize this, um, this, this Strategic Management Society conference face-to-face uh, -face for the first time in London? Okay, well, there's, there's a, a bit of fortune involved, or good fortune involved, I think, in that I, the 2020 conference was supposed to happen in London and became virtual. And so Julian Birkinshaw and Costas Marquides at London Business School were organising that. They had the, the bad fortune to have that stuck on, on in, in the virtual space. Um, and then they organised a successful conference, of course, and that must have been very, very challenging for them. But when uh, the SMS wanted to come back, they thought, well, let's go back to London. It's still London's turn. And of course, London's a great place to organise a conference. But I'm not quite sure whether Julian and Costa said, no, never again. There's too much work. <laughs> or whether SMS said, well, we've had Costa and Julian. We'll try a different team this time. Um, so they approached me. And um, that was... Uh, just, I think, a matter of chance. They're looking for people who'd been involved in the SMS for some time and kind of knew the ropes. Um, so that was part of it. Then uh, it was important to find another partner institution um, in London. And I can't remember where it came up, whether it was they suggested Imperial or I did. Uh, but then we got a new what were involved as well, which is important. It's important to have a Jewish scholar um, to sort of promote another generation as well. Yes, of course. Uh, I, I well, uh, as you know, I work here in the UK. I'm, I'm really pleased that it's happening in London, amongst other things, because I just need to take a train south and get there. Uh, but I suppose there will be challenges organising it in London face to face for the first time. There might be people who I don't know, think they can attend online and offline. And how has that been uh, navigating that very difficult transition into moving back to this new normal? Well, we shall only know in September for sure. <laughs> and in the meantime, of course, everything has been digital communication. So it's business as normal. We've had one or two people approaching us after acceptance of the papers saying, can we attend digitally um, or virtually? And as we said in the announcements, actually, no, unfortunately, we, we can't permit presenters to do that. Of course, co-authors might choose somehow to use a, uh, you know, their, their co-authors' mobile phones to attend like that. But we're encouraging everyone to turn up in person to, to retrieve all the good things about in-person meetings and recover those relationships and those you know, fortuitous meetings and accidental encounters that are so productive for research. Absolutely. I think one of the best features the SMS had was that you could network freely in the different uh, social events that occurred. And it was kind of a, a way in which you could meet the people that you had been reading about and, and perhaps develop collaborations and, and things like that. And, and obviously that tends to happen face to face and it doesn't happen virtually. Um, now, it, what have been some of the kind of interesting anecdotes that you can tell us about organizing this conference? Has it been easy? 
uh, has the have has the computer have the computers always worked or have they sometimes decided not to cooperate? Well, well, everything's worked well digitally. The SMS uh, in uh, Chicago is extremely efficient. It's a well-oiled machine, and I'm really impressed by the support that uh, Anu and I have had from particular uh, um, Anna Allen. Mm -hmm. um, and I should mention too that we have um, the cooperation and sponsorship to a degree from IBM Consulting, Jamie Cattell from IBM Consulting, and that's worked well so far as well. So yeah, everything's worked pretty smoothly so far. Um, so we're quite happy with that. Anecdotes uh, and irony, perhaps, having said that um, we wanted to promote face-to-face. Uh, -face. I still haven't met Anu physically, nor <laughs> Anna physically. So An Anna, there's some excuse, she's based in Chicago, but Anu, well, we set up a meeting and I can't remember what it was, but there's some COVID-related um, mishap and we weren't able to meet at the last month as we originally planned. Um, we, in fact, there's an occasion when Julia Houts, a colleague very involved in SMS practice IG, she was coming to London for um, a seminar and um, everything had to be postponed for some reason. Yeah, well, I think it's really hard to learn to live with that, uh, learn to live with that ambiguity and, and, and things that may or may not happen. Yeah. yeah. And, and going back to, I don't know, the memories that you had from SMS before, do you think this SMS is going to be just like any other SMS? It's going to be um, physically, we're going to meet in, in, a, in, in kind of small rooms and big rooms and in this type of hotel thing, or are there new things that, that, may, that may have come up? Uh, we are intending to have something pretty much exactly like the old SMS. There will be more web broadcasting of plenary events, so there'll be more access. And I'd like to talk about access and openness perhaps in a moment. Um, but I'm intrigued by this to an extent because uh, David Seidel and I wrote during the, the, the worst part of the COVID crisis, a piece in the Journal of Management Studies um, on how crisis reveals the hidden structures of practices. Mm. Uh, uh, one of the interesting aspects of the crisis for practice theory was how um, that theory takes for granted or, or at least um, focuses on particularly gradual incremental change. Uh, that, the essence of practice theory is to emphasize routines, repetition, patterns. Um, and so the COVID crisis did represent a, a challenge for practice theory. And in this piece, how crisis reveals the structures of practices, we looked at um, external power relations between different practices, but also particularly the internal structures um, around the ethos and tell us of a particular practice and so we wondered whether we use the example of um, uh, a, a general pra uh, general practitioners and GPs doctors surgery you know <laughs> when it went digital how does that change the ethos of the ordinary practice uh, of going to a doctor to, to see your GP, to have a little consultation, when it goes digital and what happens when it goes back. And we wondered whether the norms of efficiency, norms of uh, throughput, operational um, maximization might transfer back to face-to-face -face after the experience of digital um, consulting of doctors. And, and we wonder whether the same thing will happen with the SMS. So although it will look the same, it won't be the same. So we'll be going through the practices um, externally will look very much the same. We'll go into conference rooms and so on and so forth. We'll may even shake hands with people again. <laughs> um, we might even embrace people again, long lost friends and so on and so forth. Um, 
but will it be the same? Will the internal structures of these practices be exactly the same? So the SMS is a test, if you like, the piece that David Seidel and I did in JMS at the height of the comp uh, of the COVID crisis. So my suspicion is that one thing it, which will happen is that we'll really value much more that networking part. And one of the concerns we might have then as conference designers and organizers is whether we're allowing for that sufficiently. Um, but we shall see. And I think there will be a shift in the internal structures of the practice of conference going, even if the external appearance of that is not much changed. Conferences will still smell the same. Yeah. Well, I think if you think of, of, I remember going to some of the first conferences when Dan Shendel was organizing them and going to the last conference before COVID, it had changed a lot. Really? So, how, how did you see that? Well, I remember as a, as, a, as a student going to the SMS in Paris, for example, it felt pretty much like Dan Shendel giving a lecture and, and we were all listening. Whereas, I'm, 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 of course, I'm generalizing. Huh? Uh, and uh, as time went by, it, it was more of a group effort, if you want, uh, yeah. or more of a of a of a team of of, of several kind of heads, or and, and that changing, because yeah. there's a bit of the networking that happens on a one to one, but there's quite a bit of networking that happens in the plenaries, and when you hear people that you admire talk about things, and I don't yeah. know. So I think that's true. Um, I, if you want an anecdote which goes back a long way, Dan Shendell was the founder of the Strategic Management Society and the Strategic Management Journal. So he had naturally uh, an authority and a place in the society which was unique and couldn't be reproduced and possibly a good thing. But he also had a vision of the SMS as being elitist. And I'll come back to that again in a moment, um, perhaps. And so I fondly remember that time when SAMS, the Society for the Advancement of Management Studies, which owns the Journal of Management Studies, had accumulated a lot, of, a lot of money and needed to spend it to retain its charitable status. And so I was, I was involved in SAMS then and I said, well, look, I, I could offer the Strategic Management Society, uh, we'll, we can fund doctoral workshops. Mm -hmm. So I went to Dan Shendell and said, here's this free money to run doctoral workshops. And he said, well, we don't want people who <laughs> need to be subsidised to go to the SMS. Yes. I said, but it's free, Dan, and it's good for the next generation. No, it took a lot of persuading. But the board of the SMS um, did finally override him. And uh, he, he is not against doctoral students, but he wanted it to be a somewhat elite um, gathering. Uh, and hence the pricing structure of the SMS, which is worthwhile touching on. And since you mentioned some of the good aspects of the SMS, I, I will explain that a little bit. But anyway, going, so yeah, the SMS has had this elitist approach and that's reflected in its pricing structure as well. But we do now encourage m many more doctoral students along and the doctoral workshops, and this must be now 20 years, still going on and there's many other activities and we're using digital technologies to make the plenaries much more open to the public and so on and so forth or, or to a wider audience. On the pricing, um, I know that the SMS is much more expensive than its rivals such as the Academy of Management or EGOS, but you um, pointed to something which is really important about the SMS. Everybody in strategy goes there, and the pricing includes the meals exactly. and the social events. So unlike, say, the Academy of Management, everybody has breakfast together, has lunch together, has dinner together, and they go to the social together. <laughs> and so in that sense, it's kind of, although the pricing is expensive, but it's more democratic and less cliquey, it's not uncliquey, but slightly less cliquey than the Academy of Management is where people hive off into their own, oh yeah, I'm going to dinner with X and Y, and no, you're not invited. 
<laughs> whatever. That would be the power structure there. So in that sense, um, once you get over that initial price, it is a more participative, more inclusive um, conference than the AOM is. And possibly, I hesitate to make that comparison with an EGOS. Um, but where, where the EGOS has its own particular structure, the streams, which I do think do uh, do foster inclusion in a way. But um, so the SMS expensive, but more inclusive once you get over that initial barrier. On that note, you wanted to talk about access. Was this, this what you wanted to say or was it something else? Yeah, I, mean, I think that's it. And, and, and of course, the DPhils, uh, so the PhD scholarships, they do help. The doctoral scholarships, they do help. Uh, the increased digitalization does help. Um, what we, um, one of the things we want to do with the open title um, of the conference uh, is innovating strategy for an open world. Mm -hmm. um, in a sense, I wanted to reference one of my interests, and that's open strategy on which David Seidel and I have both written, and Julia Houts has written, of course. Um, so that was one of the themes we wanted to emphasize. But I also had in the back of my mind a more open, uh, approach to participation uh, we one of the themes i won't mention which we did try and design to be much more um open to say for indigenous theory from the global south and, and issues like that so and we wanted to be a little bit more open to on the boundaries of strategy so there's something on the new new kinds of work so we we wanted to be a little bit more permeable in terms of our boundaries. Um, symbolic and overdue. We shall also be uh, uh, recognising as a, a distinguished contributor to the discipline, somebody called Dame Vivian Hunt, but she is uh, the first uh, woman, and she's also a black woman, to ever be uh, recognised by the Strategic Management Society as a distinguished uh, contributor to the world of strategy. She's ex-head of McKinsey in London, and she's written a great deal on women in um, business. So Dame Vivian Hunt will be one of our distinguished speakers, or uh, she will have a, a, a plenary platform to speak about issues that she should cho choose herself. But we want to be more open in that way instead of having, I am a white male, um, same, same more. another white male along. So that was important. And we're also running, uh, Michelle Rogan has been very important in this at Imperial. We're running a uh, session recognizing distinguished female um, uh, scholars in the strategy discipline, particularly the pioneers. So if you think about some of the, in many ways, strategy has been quite successful by comparison with some disciplines um, in incorporating women in the in its founding generation or, or founding generations, at least. You think of Kathy Eisenhart, who I believe is the most um, cited yeah. scholar in the strategy discipline, Marjorie Petroff, Connie Helfat, Catherine Harrigan, people like that. There have been many, many, distinguished female scholars who, who've shaped the discipline in important ways. Marjorie um, Lyles. Oh, sorry? Marjorie Lyles. Yeah, Marjorie Lyles, exactly. I, 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 you know, several others, not enough. And it's important, and Annie Wadward to a certain extent, um, it's important, you know, um, that's important too, to have a, another woman co-organiser, as well as of a different generation to my own. But if it helps in the strategy as practice uh, leadership group in the strategy in the SMS now, almost all of them are women except for two. Well, that's great. Yeah, I'm um, great. Julia Balligan and Paula Jarzakowski were very important founding figures and, and still active figures yep. in the strategy as practice community. So, yeah, I think that's really important. Um, so protecting and enhancing, developing that diversity both theoretical, I made the reference to indigenous theory uh, uh, and things like that. And that's something I've been working on 
with my colleagues Duncan Angwin and Patrick Redner in our textbook, um, Exploring Strategy, then the new edition will have much more reference to theory from the global south, from the east, uh, and, and indigenous types of, for instance, leadership theory and things like that. So um, I think the strategy discipline is changing. I've no noticed that Michael Hitt, a um, really important figure in the strategy discipline, is writing again in the Journal of Management Studies um, on indigenous indigenous theories um, and uh, that that greater inclusivity is again part of that openness in the title of the um, conference innovating strategy for an open world that's fabulous thank you very much richard this has been a, a fantastic interview i hope you have enjoyed it as much as i have and i'm sure everyone in the strategies practice community will enjoy it as well as well as the broader sms Good. Well, thank you, Ignacio. That, that was fun. Um, hope to see people in London at the Strategic Management Society. Absolutely. That's the idea. Thank you. OK. Thank you.